Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years. Hi, I'm Cherry Johnson with Watauga County Arts Council and I want to welcome you back. You might remember me talking in the past about Regional Artist Project Grants. Now, Regional Artist Project Grants are a great program of the Arts Council. Uh, we partner with Ash County Arts Council, the Allegheny County Arts Council, and the Cultural Arts Council of Wilkes County. And uh, we basically what we do is we all pool our money, we take some money each and put it into a pool, and that money is matched by the North Carolina Arts Council, and that double fund, which they basically double however much money we could do locally. So that combined uh, fund is used to give out money to artists, uh, the best of the best. Uh, we run through them through a pretty rigorous uh, application process. They have to apply for the, uh, app, uh, you know, do a written application and so forth. They have to do multiple copies of that written application, which many of them find a little bit overwhelming. And then when we got that all put together, then we uh, send it off to a judge in their field, and that judge reviews their work and makes comments on a special form. Then that goes before a 12-member panel, which represents all of the counties that are involved in the project. And those folks pick the best, and it's a difficult process. We usually have around 25 applicants and they have to take that down to eight or ten uh, recipients. So sometimes it can be very hard to get it down to that level, but they very carefully go through each and every application, look at all the work samples, discuss it thoroughly. It takes them an entire day to do this project, uh, to do the process of going through that. And then when we get through all of that, we send out letters and we welcome them into the program to uh, tell them they've won a grant and they come and they do sort of like a show and tell reception where that they come and tell us all about their work. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to one of Watauga County's winners. They're winners from different counties, but the uh, Watauga County has several winners this year. And one of them, is, she's kind of a local girl that, uh, and I think the only one of the bunch that was actually a local person, uh, as far as I know. But uh, you grew up here in Watauga County. This is Catherine Cook, uh, also known as Kathy Cook. Mm -hmm. And you grew up here in Watauga County. I did. Um, I was born and raised here. Uh, I went to Parkway School mm -hmm. and I graduated from Watauga High in 2009. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I went to UNC Greensboro uh, to study art. And then I recently moved back to the area to kind of get back to my roots. Okay, now what is it you're doing while you're here in, the, in this area? Um, right now I'm working and saving up for graduate school mm -hmm. and I'm also applying for grants and trying to help promote my artwork. That's good. So you're so. not stopping the, the process at all. Mm -mm. No, nope. I'm still tracking along. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm curious because you're, I think, one of the first regional artist project grant recipients that I know of that actually grew up in our local school system. Mm -hmm. And uh, what started you down this path toward the arts? Well, actually, it was the art teachers at Watauga High. Mm -hmm. um, I used to always love to be in the art classrooms there. Sometimes I'd go and spend my lunches there, too. Right. Um, and I would just work, and they would help me any way I can. They were very inspirational and very motivational, well, Let's name too. some names. Who are the folks um, we're talking about? Uh, primarily Mr. Wilder. Shelton uh, Wilder. Shelton mm -hmm. Wilder. Um, he was a big, big inspiration on me. That's great. So. That's great. That's, I, I want to say that because I want to do a shout-out to Shelton because that – he has influenced so many students along the way and now has retired and uh, I just want to salute him for all the impact that he has had on the arts community mm -hmm. and on people like you, you know, who have gone mm -hmm. on. And there's been several of you mm -hmm. who have there gone are. on to actually be in the arts as a career, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, your current mode is sculpture, but my, my guess is you've done a lot of different kinds of art. Yeah, I've, uh, I've dabbled in quite a bit. It took mm -hmm. me, I was a late bloomer to sculpture, as they say. Um, mm -hmm. at first, I tried painting and lithography, mm -hmm. and um, I did photography for a long time, mm -hmm. and I still do on the side from time to time. Yeah. Um, but then I took a sculpture class at UNCG, and it was my first one. And my final piece for the class ended up in an exhibit, in Whoa. a show. So um, I talked with my professor, and he's like, you may want to consider you know, taking a few more of these classes. Mm -hmm. And I started to take a few more, and I decided that you know, this was it. Like, that, that's what it that's was. That's when I knew. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, having had a little bit of sculpture training myself, uh, we did a lot of different mediums. Uh, in, sculpture is not just what one thing. I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many different ways to do sculpture. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> what, what are the ways that you have explored and that you've kind of ended up settling on? 
Um, well, I, uh, I've mainly done like clay, working in clay, um, mm -hmm. and then you go through the process of doing ceramic work and firing the clay and that. Right. Uh -huh. And then I've also done where you make clay and then you take molds off right. of them and mm -hmm. then reproduce them in a mm -hmm. different medium. Um, basically, it's called casting. Right. Um, you can do it with bronze, um, aluminum, or even simple things like plaster or concrete. Right. Mm -hmm. I've got mm -hmm. a couple of plaster sculptures that I didn't mm -hmm. call it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, um, what is it about sculpture that's so much different from all the others, especially photography? They seem so vastly different in so many ways because photography, you would never touch your subject usually, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. or rarely touch your subject. Mm -hmm. Whereas in sculpture, it's all about your hands. Yeah, it's very hands-on. <laughs> um, well, I really have enjoyed it because I just... When I was a kid, I used to play in the dirt all the uh -huh. time. And I'd come in and be covered in mud. Needless to say, my mom was not happy about that. Sure. But um, I just really like the hands-on approach to mm -hmm. it and really being able to have an object in space and reacting to that object in space. But now you so. and I were just talking before we started taping this that about something that is a kind of a total divergence from that yeah. about a new medium. This is a really news to me. I thought this was cool. When I started working with the Arts Council around 1992, um, no one used computers at all, hardly ever, you know, uh, not for uh, artwork. And it was considered kind of a cheating, you know, if you use a computer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and over the years, the computer has begun to be seen as more of a tool. And I've seen graphic artists doing things like, you know, a lot of graphic design, a lot of, uh, some uh, photographers will do altering their photos in various mm -hmm. ways. You know, uh, we've seen uh, even some painters that figure out ways to use a computer with that, but I had never heard of using it with sculpture. Yes, you definitely can use it with sculpture. Um, I have just become aware of this this past year. Mm -hmm. um, this past summer, I went to Italy, at Garfignana, Italy, and I studied with the Digital Stone Project. Um, basically, the we, digital what? The Digital Stone Project. Digital Stone Project. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> look them up. They are fantastic. Um, this is only their second year uh -huh. in running. Um, they're getting ready to do their third year. Um, it's run by John Isherwood, um, mm -hmm. and it is a fantastic program. But you can actually either scan a model and compact it into a nice file for them. It's called computerized. A, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's uh, called an STL file, uh -huh. and you can send it to them to their um, technician over there, right. and you can get it to where they mill it or carve it with a robotic arm. So you do a clay model, for example, mm -hmm. and you scan that. And I'm assuming you have to scan all the sides. Yeah, it's a three-dimensional scan, so How you do have you do to. That? Um, you can use it with um, different scanners such as, um, I can't think of the name of it. But is it like a handheld, it's a, like grocery stores use? Yeah, you know, it's like uh, a handheld, mm -hmm. but a little bit more advanced. It picks uh -huh. up every single little uh, fluctuation mm -hmm. or indention or um, And then you insertion. put this on a computer mm -hmm. and you play mm -hmm. with that image. Can you alter that image at that you point? You can. Mm -hmm. You can if you want to. You can add to it. Um, you can also create... A sculpture within the programs themselves. So you can just do it only in the program. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you can have an idea in your head and never actually touch anything. <laughs> yeah, you can do it both ways. Um, what I did for the Digital Stone Project is I made a model and then I scanned it mm -hmm. and put it into a nice file for them. Mm -hmm. And then I sent it off to Gabriel, the technician for the Digital Stone Project. Wow. And um, they put it in and they milled it with their robotic arm. Um, and a lot of these arms they've used for like uh, making cars and they've just reprogrammed them. That makes good sense, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. And they put different bits and stuff on them and they use uh, what they call tool paths where they figure out exactly where the bit on mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. robotic arm is going to move and drill um, to create your piece. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. I'm just impressed with this. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm, I love computers. I like, well, I, you love them until a hard drive crashes, which mm -hmm. occasionally happens. But <laughs> basically, I love computers. And uh, I, the idea of creating something like that, I'm thinking about this sculptor that is maybe handicapped mm -hmm. and cannot do the old-fashioned, you know. Yeah, because it's a very mm -hmm. physical, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. with stone. Um, it takes a lot of energy to be able to do that. It does, so. yeah. And not to mention you can screw something up so easily. Oh, you can. <laughs> one wrong nick and you're done. <laughs> so, so this is kind of a safer way to do it. Yeah, it's a little bit safer. <laughs> 
And it's not, now I know a sculptor who is now a painter because physically she fell and she did some damage to her body and she's no longer able to do the big physical work that mm -hmm. was required for the kind of sculpture she did. So I'm thinking, mm -hmm. this is right down her alley, you know. Yeah, she could definitely uh -huh. use this as a way to still create sculptures. Uh-huh. Um, she can create them on the computer and then she can have them milled or even cast in bronze or aluminum or other mediums. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. I am so impressed. So now also you could be, I mean, a sculptor to me, an artist that's a sculptor, there has to be that internal understanding of, of how shapes work and the lights mm -hmm. and the shadows and the textures and all of that wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. But you could actually be someone who was very computer savvy and you'd still have to have that innate understanding of what a sculpture, what's a good sculpture, what's mm -hmm. not. Yep. But someone that has computer skills can really put some cool work out there. Yeah, they can. They've done amazing things with digital sculpture. Without ever actually having to learn how to hold the chisel and how to <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yep. That is fascinating. Now, you received this grant and I am guessing, but I'm thinking you may have been the youngest winner we've had too. Uh, you certainly are among the definitely youngest ones. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a tremendous honor to get a, a grant like this. I was very and, honored. Yeah, and to outstrip several other artists, you know, to get there. I mean, we've got great artists in this area. Mm -hmm. We and do. And so, uh, so to be one of the, the few that end up with this grant is a big award. And so, now what are you going to do with your grant? Um, well, mainly I've been working in portraiture mm -hmm. and doing uh, expressive portraiture where I'm right. playing with different expressions and trying to create, yeah. you know, something that appeals to my interest in archaeology and geology. Mm -hmm. So I'm also very interested uh -huh. in textures <laughs> and um, the way things look and how we react to objects in space. Um, so now I'm trying to branch out and go to the full figure mm -hmm. um, and use the whole figure as a mode of expression. Now your current style, I noticed we were looking at some of your slides and, and some of your, you started out kind of abstract. Mm -hmm. I did start mm -hmm. out more abstract. Um, mm -hmm. That was before I found my love for the human form. Uh -huh. um, and then I got into portraiture um, mm -hmm. with the help of one of my professors, Pat Wasserbauer. Um, she has done figurative sculpture for most of her training career, mm -hmm. and she's started to go back and do um, abstraction. <laughs> um, but she really helped me figure out my love for the figure and really and how to approach it, mm -hmm, and also yeah. the anatomy behind it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so now I'm trying to get my own little twist on the figure. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, when you're studying figure sculpture, figurative sculpture in college, I know if you're doing figure drawing, you often work with a model, a live we, model. We do, do too. You do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And so then that model, you're, you're basically running around them in all, all angles then, yes. rather than like a painter's going to be at one angle, and that's the angle they're going to choose to paint from. You know? yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we usually, um, you can start out with a small Mm -hmm. model or you can do like a big one but you do have a human model that's usually in the center and then you move around them constantly wow. and observe every single part that you can and uh -huh. try and get everything just right um, but it really helps to have that anatomy background in there so uh -huh. you know which uh -huh. muscles lay over the others and why it looks a certain way well the skin so. goes the way it goes mm -hmm. because of what's underneath it mm -hmm. yeah Yep. That's really fascinating uh, and stuff. Now, you've moved from the more literal sculpture into mm -hmm. a less uh, literal sculpture, like, is that correct? Yes, um, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to repeat any kind of classical art like mm -hmm. Bernini or any of those. Right. Um, I'm try trying to kind of get my own twist on abstracting the figure. Mm -hmm. um, not so much as what Emile Azamora does, um, where it's like just plain, um, you don't see really any kind of musculature or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really interested in more in Rodin's work. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And because he abstracts it just enough, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's not so much that you lose that musculature underneath. Right. So you see the so. the actual figure, mm -hmm. and and then, and then it's just played with in some way or other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's really cool. So so ultimately, when all of this is done, when you have finished your grant, then what's what's going to be next? Um, well, I am going to try and make life-size sculptures, life-size ah, human figures, okay. um, which will take a lot of time, but I think it will be a great challenge. Um, and I'm learning how to do it both ways. Um, mm -hmm. I'm learning the more classical method where you look at the figure right. and you move around them. Mm -hmm. And I'm also looking at how to model it in these 3D modeling programs as well. 
So I'm trying to figure out a way to combine the two. That's cool. Really. Well, and that's kind of the, the point is that you take all the tools, all the things that you've been taught, and then you find your own way. Mm -hmm. And that's yep. that's what you're working toward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now um, you just talked about graduate school. What are you thinking? Um, I'm really considering William Patterson University. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small private I school. I've heard of it. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's uh, in Wayne, New Jersey. Uh -huh. um, my sister lives up there, so uh -huh. it'd be so nice. So you heard to about it through that. <laughs> yeah. Well, also um, the Digital Stone Project. Uh -huh. uh, they are having their last uh, exhibition at William Patterson uh -huh. University. Um, okay. That will start on March 2nd and end uh, April 10th, I believe. Wow. So I guess so. I know who's going to go check that out. Hey, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, long-term vision, 20 years from now, what do you want to be doing? Um, I want to be able to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to be a teacher. Um, oh, and okay. I want to teach students and mm -hmm. let them know about all the different options that they have. I want to inspire Shelton Wilder. Yeah. <laughs> I want to inspire people like he did. So. Well, and Shelton did have a big impact on the students that he taught, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he doesn't always like for me to say this, but I was one of his students <laughs> <laughs> way, way, way back. <laughs> so uh, uh, at any rate, he's had a tremendous impact on so many people. And I think if that's your goal, I think that's a terrific goal to have. But I also well, think you. you shouldn't let go of being the artist yourself. Oh, I'm going to yeah. try and hold on to that as well. Yeah, it's very so. hard sometimes to balance all those things. So. It is, it mm -hmm. is, but I think it will be very rewarding. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, if I get into more shows and stuff, it would be nice to be able to take the students right. and see, like, you can achieve mm -hmm. this too. Yes, so. big deal to, to make them feel like it's it's not just something to look at. Mm -hmm. It's something they could do, Yeah, something they could try. Mm -hmm. So that's really cool. Well, I'm so glad to get to know you a little bit better, and I'm looking forward to working with you more in the future. Oh, me too, um, thank you. We have already been talking about the possibility of Catherine doing an exhibit with us. Uh, we also uh, have other opportunities available for artists all through the things that the Arts Council does. We don't just give grants to artists. We also have an educational series called The Business of Art. Catherine and I were talking earlier about the fact that she has a degree that is all about the art technical side of it, but none about the business side of it and, and I bet you'd like to sell a piece here and there. I would. That would be very <laughs> nice. <laughs> so and and the point of that is is that if an artist is selling work then they are an entrepreneur mm -hmm. at whatever scale they want to be at, but they are an entrepreneur. And some artists make it a full time that's how they support their family, that's how they, they live. And mm -hmm. uh, some artists just dabble and, and keep selling work here and there, but it's really not their main focus. But at any of those, you've got to know how to do those things. You've got to know about the marketing side of it, the, the tax side of it, the financial mm -hmm. management, the how to photograph your work. But I guess you got that one down. If you yeah, did. yeah. I did get that but, one down, but the rest I would like some help on. That right. Would be nice. mm -hmm. And so we offer a series of, of workshops ongoing all the time called The Business of Art. Uh, we've got several coming up this spring. If you are an artist and you would like to get in on some of those, some of them can be as, can be free depending on how you are set up to enroll. So uh, you can go and learn more about that by going to our website, check out our online store, and um, in the online store there is a link that specifically is Business of Art Workshops. There's also, for the rest of you, uh, plenty of opportunities. We've got 40-something workshops that we are offering this spring, and this means that from now till Memorial Day, and so uh, things, I don't think we've got any sculpture. You may want to think about that, Catherine. We might want to get I you will. to teach a workshop. I will. Uh, because we don't have any sculpture workshops, but we do have painting and we have uh, making things like scarves and doing sort of craft type things. We've got such a big variety. I would, uh, don't want to take up your time at the moment to go through those, but I would encourage you to go to the online store again and browse. Now, you can reach the online store by going to the Arts Council's website, watauga-arts.org, and there's a tab that says on our online store. Also on Facebook, there is a tab that says our online stores. So you can get to it that way as well. And so I encourage you to go check it out. We have got some cool stuff happening right now, and it's so simple to enroll and get involved in the arts. And we've got so many cool things happening all the time at the Arts Council. So I just, and, and working with people like Catherine makes it all the most fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me. And I look forward to many more opportunities in the future. Me as well. Thank <laughs> okay. you. Check our website, watauga-arts.org, for information about this and a lot more. Watauga Arts Council with your host, Cherry Johnson, serving arts in Watauga County for more than 30 years.